Here we go again. This is my candlestick telephone that I'm creating for the Retro Blender Challenge. That's my challenge on the Zero Bio Discord. And if you'd like to join that, it's for anybody, beginners all the way up. Uh, it's on the Zero Bio Discord, and the link is in the description. And also, this reference image that I'm using is available for download. So here is where we left off, and I've got the reference image in the back, and I've just moved it so that this part is uh, overlapping the reference. And we're going to get going. We're going to model uh, this part. We're going to see if we can get through the modeling uh, this time. So I'm going to use my 3D cursor, and I'm going to click right about uh, there. Right about in the middle as best I can, and then I can move it. Oh, I'm not getting it. All right, fair enough. Good enough. All right, so we're going to create this dial. Now, uh, this is a retro phone, uh, and that means that it's not like necessarily the original phone. It's it's a more newer thing that's created to look like an old phone. So this, this is not actually going to be the old... Uh, rotary uh, kind of uh, dial that that I used to have I didn't have one of these but the old phones before cell phones before cordless phones and stuff like that uh, so it's gonna have some push buttons anyhow let's bring in a circle and we're gonna make this 36 vertices and I'm gonna go to edit mode and I'm gonna rotate X 90 and then what I want to do is I just want to make sure that this is moved up and away from from there all right okay so I'm gonna scale it down till it fits and I will move it so that I can follow the diagram a little bit better so mm, it's pretty good like that okay cool I'm gonna go into wireframe and I'm gonna press E and S and I'm gonna pull in until I'm at the edge of the circles E and S until I'm in about the middle of the circles E and S till I'm in about at the end of the circles E and S I'm going to come into here and then press E and S and I'm just going to leave those polys to make that ridge. And I'm going to come in a little bit more, E and S, come into here. And then that part's actually going to go back. So maybe I'll go into solid view and I'll, and I'll bring it back a little bit like that. E and S come in like that and then F to make a face. All right, so what we need is press three, that one and that one. Those are the ridges that are going to come out. So I'm gonna bring those out a little bit. Just for now, we have that done, we'll come back to it. Okay, back into wireframe mode. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be selecting four faces here, leaving a space, four faces there. So I don't wanna be in wireframe to do that. I'm gonna press three for face selection and C for circle select and click, click, and just keep skipping one as I go around and that should give me 12 sections all right so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press I to inset I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna pull in a little bit just to clear the edges I'm gonna go over to individual origins I'll need that in a moment right click and choose loop tools circle and it's very close to the edges are overlapping. So in individual origins, I'm gonna press S and I'm gonna scale it in just a little bit so it clears the edges. And then I'm gonna press I to inset one more time, pull it in just a little bit. And then I'm gonna look at the position, it's pretty good. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a hole like that, or make holes. All right, so I'm gonna take this whole thing now and I'm gonna give it some thickness, extrude back a little bit like that, X faces, and get rid of those faces. I'll take, take the whole thing, Alt N, recalculate outside in case it was flipped. So I've got that. Let's go back in now and bevel these edges so just a little bit. That one and that one, that one and that one. I'm in edge selection number two. And Control B and pull like this, and I'm gonna have three segments in total. Be putting a subdivision on there of two and shading smooth. And that looks fine to me. If you wanted, you could put an edge loop out here if you liked it a bit sharper. I don't know that it helped that much, but. Okay, so now I'm going to, I've got a circle selected. Now let's not choose that one. Choose that circle, look in the front. Shift D to duplicate, S to scale. I'm gonna pull it, uh, actually, yeah, I'll pull it out to there. P to break it out, so I've got that. And I'm going to, I think I'm just going to F to make a face, E to extrude, pull it back to give it some thickness and get rid of that back face. 
and I don't want it that close. I don't think I'm going to take this upper edge and I'm just going to eye the inset. I'll pull it in like that and then grab this edge and bevel it just with the three. So I'm, I need a little bit of a distance between them. So I'm going to take this and pull it back just a little bit more like that. I can adjust that shade smooth. Let's make sure that's facing the right way. There, you see that did change. All right, so we're getting there now. Now what I need is these the, the actual buttons in there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select one of these circles. Shift S, cursor to selected. All right, and then I'm going to bring in a cylinder. And I think I'll go for... I don't know, maybe 18 vertices. Scale it down. Rotate X 90. And I want it to be touching the back. And then I'm going to bevel this. Control B, pull. But I do want it kind of flat. So I'm not going to make it too rounded because I'm going to be putting text on there and stuff. And it'll look better if it's not too, too rounded. Um, and I do want it to stick through. I can adjust all this later, so I think I'll leave it like that for now. And now I want to select something that's very central. So I'm going to select this circle here, bring my 3D cursor there, and I'm going to spin this. All right, so I'm in edit mode, and it's selected. So actually, I'm not in edit mode. Now I am. So I'm going to choose the spin tool and Y direction. I'm going to pull this, and I'm going to make this 360 degrees and 12 steps. Now that didn't work. And so what, what I'm gonna do is, let's back out of that. Uh, I didn't have the whole thing selected. All right, so here we go again. 360 degrees, 12 steps, that's good. The size I think is okay. I'm gonna select everything, Alt N, recalculate outside. That did change some stuff there and we've got some buttons in there. So let's just focus on the buttons. Come back in here and we're gonna select the backs and we'll delete those. There we go, slash key to bring everything back. And that's really all I'm gonna do. I don't think I'm gonna do the little curved part down there. Now, I am probably going to leave this in an orthographic view. For, for texturing. I'm not sure how I'm going to texture the buttons, if I'm going to do it just in Substance Painter or if I'm going to do another graphics program. So I don't really want to angle it, but what I will do is I'll make a copy of this just so you'd see how I would eventually put it in. So I'm going to take it like this. Actually, I'll do it in knob. Yeah, okay, I'll take it like that. Shift D, pull it out, P to break it out. And maybe just for the fun of it for now, I'll just, I'll just join that stuff. All right, that may change a little bit because of the modifiers, but I'll just join it so it's a little easier to just, you know, experiment with it. Okay, I'm going to position it roughly in the middle. All right, and I'm going to look from the side. I'll bring it down, and I'm just going to rotate it by eye. Okay, I'm an individual origin, so go back to median point, and it's going to be something like this and push it in. Yeah, something like that. So that's how it's gonna be. So I'm not sure I wanna texture it like that. I mean, I probably could do it, but uh, I'll leave it like this for the time being. I'll leave that one there as well, just while we continue. Okay. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on this piece here. So I'm going to click roughly in the center of that and I'm going to use the screw modifier so I'm going to bring in a plane and merge at center but I want to take that point and I want to pull it up and eventually that'll be right at the side we can work on that in a bit okay I'm just going to do this quickly and have some fun with this actually I'm going to bring it down here all right E and uh, G and I'm just going to sort of notch in and just do this kind of quickly and get a shape that's hopefully pleasing. But just to show that you don't have to take a lot of time on this and still get something that looks not, not relatively nice. Yeah, maybe get some points that are not necessarily needed. But now nah, we'll, we'll try it. I'm going to come up to here and then we'll just sort of simulate this slope here. 
and we'll probably have to touch this up but that's okay that's part of the game for sure where am I am I coming up straight now all right let's just go up straight there we go all right I'll come right up to there and then I'll angle it out to there come up actually maybe pull these out a little bit uh, you know what I may want to point in between there and uh, just pull it down a little bit do that come up to here and let's say we just notch it in a little bit okay and this one I'll, I'll just bring in a little bit as well all right so we got that let's see how that looks with the screw modifier all right so that happened and so what we're gonna have to do is uh, we're going to um, set the origin to geometry and now it's like that sorry about that and then I'm gonna take this and f pull it out because I moved that point when I shouldn't have let's go on the wireframe all right it's pretty good probably close enough to what we need all right let's also do the flip there we go and control 2 shade smooth and let's pull this in we're gonna fix that up in a bit and all right let's look at this I think I can go ahead and apply this and then we can work on it subdivision I didn't apply so let's drag an edge loop up here I'm gonna want an edge loop here again because this is metal or hard plastic we want some relatively hard edges to make it look better and that will work better in substance painter anyhow I don't mind these they're a little funny but the whole thing is a little funny so I'm gonna leave it like that and uh, down here this is gonna be where we uh, listen and so what I'm gonna do I think is I'm going to uh, come up and scale in a bit and come in just like that now I don't want this part too hard you know because you put it against your ear so I want it to seem kind of kind of soft and I'll put another edge loop maybe here to tighten it. Mm, I don't know if I like that maybe here I'll probably end up at the same, same thing yeah it's okay something like that okay so that's that basic thing yeah all right and then how about to make the uh earpiece we take this shift d let's pull that out and to get it close to where we want it let's select an edge here shift s cursor to selected and then take this guy here and set the origin to the 3d cursor and then set the geometry to origin period key to zoom in that at least gets it in the general area let's go in this and rotate x90 and now I think I'll just scale this up I'll make it bigger than the other one it makes I think it makes sense I don't know I hope so and put that in there like that actually maybe to be a little bit more convincing I'll uh, take this edge and I'll extrude it up so it's we get that kind of effect and then I'll not that maybe I'll bring in come on I'll bring an edge loop in here just to in there you know get that kind of thing so we get that in there now is everybody facing the right way oh yeah there is a little bit of work to be done I can see so let's do this yeah this thing otherwise I think we're okay and as you can see I've still got my old my matte cap on all right so you know all right so we're gonna create that piece now are we on there yeah we're on there pretty good all right so let's do this let's come in here and let's select there and we'll build it there okay so for that I need a cylinder I'm gonna go for 32 now a cylinder 32 vertices scale it down 
and it may not end up looking exactly like the diagram and it's hard to do the same thing perfectly twice uh, I can make the same same mistake twice but I don't know if I can do the same exact thing so that's smaller than that okay that's fine uh, we'll close that up a little bit more and I might make it come down and uh, we'll work on, on other stuff in, in a bit. Okay, so this guy, so here's what we want to do. Let's, uh, let's hide this thing and just work, look at that. So I'm gonna come into this and I'm going to add an edge loop and click and the dialog box is open. I'm gonna put eight in there and deselect, go into wireframe, three for face selection. And I'm going to box select so that I leave maybe, let's do it on the other side as well, four. So it should be even on this side, even on that side. So we'll come out to there. No. Okay, let's do that again. I guess I got to hold down shift. Okay, so this like that. And I'm leaving four. One, two, three, four. Yes, I can count to four. All right, so if I did that right, let's go back into solid view and pure key to focus on that. Okay, I'm gonna press E and Alt S and pull and pull it nice and far into the middle like that. Okay, that's, that's looking good. Let's try the bevel modifier now. I'm gonna bring that up to three, um, 0 0.02. I'm going to shade smooth and I'm going to put on arc. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the top and the bottom. And this is going to change the bevel a little bit and that's exactly what I want. As you can see, I'm pulling in like this. I press E and uh, SZ, pull it in like that. And the wire will connect there. I'm going to drag an edge loop up near the top and an edge loop down near the bottom and hopefully that's going to be okay. We can try adding weighted normal and normals auto smooth. We should get a decent result. Okay so the next thing we're going to do is add a simple deform in the Z uh, taper. And I just have to reverse that. I'm just sort of pulling it in like this. And I'll look at the diagram again. And uh, we'll uh, adjust the size of this whole thing. And see what we can do. Okay, I'm going to scale shift Z. Make it a little bit more like that. And that's pretty good. Let's bring that stuff back. And then you can take this, you can rotate it if you want, you know, the holes right at the front. Uh, not too worried about that right now. Now this actually may be, um, let's see, do I wanna apply that? I think I will go ahead and apply that. And then I can come in here and, you know, I can, I can make it, uh, let's see. Let me do that. We'll see about the whole size in a bit, but we at least have that piece. Now, of course, with that there, we didn't necessarily need this hole. Um, if I do that, I don't know. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll just go in wireframe and, oh, uh, geez, maybe I'll hide that. Grab this first of all. I don't need to be in wireframe anymore now that I think about it. Uh, grab here and come out. I'm gonna bring that back, go back in. And I don't know if we even need that, that showing, but I'll scale shift Z anyhow. And so the hole is there. Yeah, it's not even really visible. All right, anyhow. All right, so I'm going to select the top face and we're gonna build the cord. But just before we do that, I'm going to, let's hide that for a moment, it's getting in my way. Let's look from the back, I think it's control one, and come in here and select something central, so just grab a point there, and I'm gonna bring in uh, a circle to make sort of where the cord would attach to this, 
to this unit. 16 vertices, rotate X90, and just, you know, do something. It doesn't have, you may not ever even see it, but I'm going to uh, extrude back like that, and I'm going to, I'll just do that. I won't even fill it, we'll see. Uh, three is fine. Flip the polys and shade smooth. Maybe a subdivision, maybe not. We'll see. Let's push that in like that. And that might even be a bit too big. And maybe I'll scale in the Y so it sticks out a bit. All right, I just want to have a goal, you know, a place where we're going to end. Before we do the cord, I've moved this unit so that it's beside here because we're going to need something to hold that this piece here all right so I'm going to do something about that right now I'm gonna add an edge loop and control B pull up like this and I'm going to take these two faces and I'm gonna press I to inset E to extrude back and I'm going to delete that face and I'm going to add an edge loop and pull it up so I get something like that and I may decide to take this point and this point and scale in the Z to see if that helps relieve a little bit of tension and it, and it usually does with my 3d cursor right there I'm going to bring in a circle with 16 vertices and I'm going to scale it down and I'm going to focus, I think, just on that. Look down from the top. I'm going to take this point and delete it. And then I'm going to join those points. And uh, let's see. Let's take the whole thing and um, E and S. Bring it in. Give it a bit of thickness. And then I'm going to take this edge here. And I'm going to extrude it back. It's probably going to be a little bit too wide. But we'll come to that in a bit. Let's get rid of a few faces here. We'll start with those. And then we'll start having a look at this. I'm going to bring it down. I want to be able to slide it on and off. So that I'm probably going to come to there and get rid of those faces. And then now well, let's have a look at this. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to scale it in the Y. Scale that in the Y so it seems like it would fit it's looking a little off from there for some reason for that from that hole and i think i'll just move it over and we'll see what the deal is here all right something like that maybe i'll pull it back i'm going to flip the polys something like that okay so I think we're almost at the end we got to do that cord all right so we've got this little piece back here and we're gonna try I am NOT very good at doing this part I do have cable Raider but I don't want to use anything like that uh, I have an old free version and I'm not sure if there's a free one anymore I know there's a paid one it's not very much but I'm trying to do this without add-ons except for the texturing where I use Substance Painter. All right, so I'm going to bring in a curve path, and we're just going to go for it. And I'm going to do it quick so I don't waste your time. Uh, I think you know uh, how to do this. I'm going to grab this point, and I'm going to extrude it down. I'm going to get rid of a couple of points, and I'm just going to try to make it look like it's just hanging. 
and it's coming down to the ground. Take a look from the back. And I can't see because of that. Okay. Back into this. There we go. I'm going to extrude out this way. To about there. I guess we got to come back a little further. And start coming towards that hole. Just want to get a sense of how this is looking. I think I'd like to have it come back a little more. I mean, if I could. I just don't want it to look like it's floating in the air. So we'll do that. We'll look from the side. And maybe I'll come up. And in roughly. Or you can spend as much time as you want getting a, a really good curve that's believable. Um, I'm just going to probably go with that for the sake of, of this video. So I have a curve path. And my 3D cursor is right at the top. So what I'm going to do now is add a mesh plane. And I'm going to merge at center. And I'm going to pull it a little ways out from the center. Like that. Back into object mode. I'm going to use the screw modifier. And I'm going to turn up the screw. I'm holding down shift so it doesn't go too crazy. I'm going to turn up the iterations a little bit. And it's in the Z. All right. So I'm going to start with that. But I'm going to change the steps, I think. I'll leave that alone for now. I'm going to add a curve modifier. And I'm going to switch this to Z. And I'm going to choose my curve. I'm going to pull it up a little bit. Because I'm going to want a straight piece coming off of here. And I go back to, the, to, to here. And I'm going to use a size of about 0 0.08. Uh, we're going we're gonna to try that and let's just increase the iterations and follow it down and see what this is starting to look like it's actually looking a little small to me so i'm going to come in and i'm going to pull like this to get a wider a wider one iterations going up and now that i've done that i may have to adjust okay that's looking fine bring the iterations up i think you can only go up to 100 and but then you can punch in numbers uh beyond that and that's probably, and then I'm going to take a piece off there and go in. So I just want to look at the diameter of that and see. I think I'm going to make it a bit bigger too. Like that. And if I do that, do I have to make any changes? No, just the diameter, right? All right. Well, anyways, that's the idea. All right. Not saying that's a good curve or anything, but uh, if that's the case, let's go ahead and apply that I will apply that I did a quite a few steps so it might it's it's going to be quite heavy let's convert it to a curve and increase the size here like this you know you decide what you think looks good we'll shade smooth yeah it's a little bit funny but whatever you get the point okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete a few points here and choose a point like maybe that one that i feel i could um convince and go to another view to go down in uh, maybe even in a couple of other points and choose that one and say okay you are going down into the belly of the beast okay so where am i that and that we're going to pull you guys roughly into the center we're going to take you and we're going to do this and your buddy can eh, can come over a little bit and of course i'm going to put on a subdivision of, of at least one and that's going to be the idea then it's just you know kind of tweaking this until you get it in the position that it should be and you know something like that and maybe you have to come back and say you know what i gotta make this a little bit a little bit bigger now what would it look like if i was to take say this point and do an alt s on it is that believable nah that would help us all right whatever okay we're almost done let's get over here and choose somebody who volunteers to go in i'm going to control plus a few times 
maybe I'll come up to to the top. Let's try that. Nah. Yeah. All right. Why not? Just for the, just for the fun of it. Okay. And where are you? Okay. I'll go. I'll, one more. We'll take this guy. So you're the one that's going in. Roughly. You and your friends are coming back here. I'll do that and say, okay, you're not helping. So goodbye. I'll take you. And, and, you know, just play with the points till you get something that you think looks reasonable. I'm doing this a little bit quick, you know, for the for video purposes. There you go. Scale that down, maybe. Okay. Now, if I actually take that and hide it, and I take this and I make sure that it's in the phone collection, are all these things? Yeah, that was one piece. Okay, let's take all these things and make sure they're in the phone collection, and then I will uh, instance this just for the fun of it. And I think that will be it for the modeling, unless there's something I've missed or something I want to go back and do. Let's try uh, Shift C. Bring the three D cursor back there. Shift A, coll uh, collection, phone. Did we get everybody? Nope. This guy has to be in there too. Oh, and what about the speaker? Yeah, the speaker's in there. Okay, and then I can take this one and go rotate uh, 90, not that. Uh, rotate Z90, and you can take it again, and uh, rotate Z45. You know, just so you can get different views of this thing uh, all in one. Okay, well, hopefully your cord looks a little bit better than mine, but that's what I'm coming up with for the phone. And the next step is going to be going back and tweaking anything I feel is wrong. For example, I might redo the cord, uh, but otherwise I'm going to have to unwrap this thing and texture it and submit it for the uh, Blender Challenge Retro. Cool. So if you want to model this, the reference image is available to download. And if you want to join the Blender Challenge, just come on over to the Discord. Take care.